It's day six of World Matsuri Week with Japanese Classic Car Show, and today we enter the Neo Classic era with the cars of the 1990s. Let's take a look at some of these great bubble era classics. Ready? Here we go. Kendon Anderson of Arvada, Colorado, traveled to Japan in 2014 to purchase this 1990 Nissan Skyline R32 GTR from the specialty shop Zenitani. However, during transit to the United States, the car was broken into, stripped, and damaged. Kendon spent the next three years rebuilding his damaged dream car into the showpiece you see today. This creatively modified 1992 Mazda MX-5 Miata comes to us from Gilbert, Arizona's Nicholas Hammond. Powered by a 1.8 liter swap, this pearl white roadster is being shown at JCCS for the first time this year. Ho Dao of La Palma, California presents this 1992 Acura Integra. Ho's car has been modified in a period style with a host of JDM DA9 parts, as well as a ground control suspension and Mugen wheels. The American Honda Collection of Torrance, California brings us this original Survivor 1993 Honda Prelude. An icon of bubble era engineering, this mint condition Prelude boasts Honda's pioneering four-wheel steering system. Jordan Kaneshiro of Cypress, California has taken his 1990 Toyota Camry from mild to wild. This creatively modified sedan features a custom body kit, a 5-speed manual conversion, and a Gecko Racing coilover setup. This original Survivor 1992 Toyota LH100 High Ace is a low-mileage JDM import owned by Steve Capito of Chatsworth, California. It makes its second ever appearance at JCCS this year. Timothy Yule of Phoenix, Arizona is the owner of this creatively modified 1993 Mazda RX-7. This FD3S is motivated by a highly tuned 13B good for up to 460 horsepower on 16.5 pounds of boost. Timothy's FD appears for the first time at JCCS this year. Hi, I'm Tim Isle and this is my 1993 Mazda RX-7.
Janet Fujimoto is well known for her show quality Toyotas, but in a change of pace for JCCS 2020, she's bringing us this creatively modified 1994 Mazda Miata M edition. Janet's Miata is making its show debut today, and we hope it will be only the first of many Mazdas to receive her special touch. Here's Sean Sampayan's creatively modified 1990 Honda CRX coming to us from Moreno Valley, California. Sean has upgraded seemingly every single part on this CRX, from its high comp B20 engine to its track ready suspension to its custom tweed upholstery. Jeff Koch of Phoenix, Arizona brings us his stock original 1990 Nissan Skyline GTR Nismo. You might recognize Jeff from his massive selection of diecast offered each year at JCCS. We hope that our online format gives him the chance to just relax this year and show off his prized R32. This creatively modified 1992 Nissan Sentra SER comes to us courtesy of Charles Barnes of Anaheim, California. Charles is the original owner of this black SER and recently added a turbocharger to its list of modifications. Tyson Hughey is arguably the leading collector of classic Acuras in America, and for JCCS 2020, he presents this stock original 1995 2.5 TL in rare garnet red pearl. Its fresh appearance hides the fact that this car has 262,000 miles on its odometer. Hey JCCS, I'm Tyson Hughey in Phoenix, Arizona, and this is my 1996 Acura 2.5 TL, manufactured in December 1995. Today's 90s Kyusha Day is presented by Mother's Car Care Products. Want your car to shine like Troy Sumitomo's 240Z Dream Car? Here's how to do it. Everybody. My name is Troy Sumitomo. I'm the owner of Five Axis, and behind me is my 1971 Series 1 240Z. Um, I've had this car since the early 90s, and my goal with this vehicle was to make it look like I still had my car from back in the day when I was a kid, and that would be in the 80s. So, um, the one thing I love about this Z is that it was back in the day, it was like that the Porsche to me. It was like the slightly out of reach sports car that I've always wanted, but now that I'm, I'm older, I was, I was able to find one. And the great thing about this car is that this is actually. Uh, a very low mileage, all original vehicle when I bought it. And it only had like 43,000 miles on the clock. So the first thing that I was really torn whether to go and do this to it. But what I wanted to do was start with a nice clean slate. And trust me, this car is, is, was beautiful to work on because it wasn't dirty underneath. There was no grease. There was, you know, everything was well kept and maintained. And, and all the screws and fasteners are actually still there. So it was really, like I said, a real pleasure to work on. So, so the one thing is, because I grew up here in the States, I wanted to make this, I guess like we can call it ADM, but more like American uh, Japanese influences. So what I, I didn't put the fender mirrors and all that stuff, but I actually got the period correct stuff, like the little baby tornado mirrors, and I got the wink mirrors. I even went as far as to put the, the tint strip on the front, but not, use contact paper like we used to do back in the day. 
Um, other things too is like I didn't want to flare it because that's more of the JDM style and also I just couldn't bring myself to punch holes in my fender and, and stuff. So, but under the hood, I did do what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to have like an old school kind of race motor, which is basically just carbureted, you know, side draft carburetors and stuff. And, and everything I tried to keep it all JDM and I have Mikuni carburetors and, and you know, like in, the intake and all that stuff, they're all Japanese made. But the, the header was one area that I kind of decided to try something different. And it's a, it's a company called Z Story out of France, but it's all stainless and it was very well fabricated. And the main thing was the welds were really nice and it, and it fit really well and, and the price was good and I, I really wanted to try it out so um, that's the only thing that's not really super JDM but um, the one thing that you can't see from here but underneath the car there's tons of, of enhancements done because I felt the suspension was probably the one area that really needed the, the most enhancement um, and fortunately today there's a lot of companies making some really nice suspension components in fact uh, Tane who's one of my suspension partners uh, they, they make a um, custom damper that you can actually you, uh, incorporate into the existing uh, component suspension components. So what they did is they take it apart and they put their damper in there. And then as far as some of the other components and stuff, there's a company called T3 or Techno Toy Tuning that makes a lot of really nice billet aluminum pieces uh, for the suspensions as well as uh, supports for like the rear end and stuff. So that's kind of where I paid a lot of more attention to kind of upgrading the vehicle to more like a, a resto mod versus uh, the exterior and the, and then the interior. Uh, if you look on the interior, the one thing that's really cool about it, it's all original. You know, even the carpets are original, and even the heel pad. Uh, I took the, the mats that were out in there originally out, and, and the heel pad in there is immaculate. So whoever drove this car really took great care of it. And, uh, and of course, the, the great thing is the dashboard is, 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 is crack-free and stuff. Um, I even go as far as to you know, use the same car care products I used when I was a kid. Uh, especially the mother's magnet aluminum polish. I think anybody who grew up in the 80s knows that thing. That thing is would put them on the map. And I even use their products today on uh, a lot of cars, you know, on my show cars and stuff. And they have a great ceramic line called CMX. And then they have a speed line, which is really made for just quickly cleaning stuff. So, you know, the main thing was that, uh, like I said, I just wanted people to think I still had my car from the 80s. So like, and, and so everything I do with the car, I try to keep it pure correct. So one advantage of owning a company uh, like Five Axis is that my daily thing is building cars. So the great thing was I, I can easily custom make parts and modify things. Like the wheels, I actually had to take a center out of an existing JDM wheel and then find a barrel that would fit the outside. Also under the hood, there's a lot of custom made parts. I have the, the little heat shields under the carburetors are all custom made. Um, and even stuff that didn't fit quite right, like the distributor had a little bit of a problem getting it to mount, but I was able to make my own bracket. Some of the suspension components, because of the modifications I made, it didn't work. So it was really great to be able to just throw stuff up there and, and fix it and modify it. So I do have that advantage uh, being, being in the business that I'm in. Yeah, Five Axis is a design and prototype shop. I started back in the mid-90s uh, to service the design community. So we've been really fortunate to be aligned with big companies like Toyota, Honda, Lexus. and. Uh, Mainly what we were building was a lot of their concept cars, probably the, my two favorite that come to mind are the FT1 and the LFLC. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the good advantage of that, like I said, is that I, I can build things and I have knowledge of, of fabrication and stuff. So working on an old car like this is, is, a, is a lot of fun. So because I'm so busy all the time, it took me a long time to finish this car. But last uh, two years ago, before I uh, actually had surgery and I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to drive the car again, I debuted the car at JCCS. Unfortunately, we can't do it this year, but uh, we're looking forward to being able to do it again when uh, everything kind of clears up. I look forward to seeing everybody out at JCCS next year. Here's an inside look at top rank international vehicle importers, one of America's leading importers of JDM automobiles. What we're gonna do right here is go back, 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 back. way back, back into time.
We're back with more Cars of the 90s here on Day 6 of World Matsuri Week, presented by Japanese Classic Car Show. All the way from Yukahashi, Japan, here's Kazushige Sakamoto's 1994 Nissan Skyline GTR. This creatively modified R32 has an exotic build sheet, including a full carbon body and a naturally aspirated RB30 KAI engine that emphasizes fun driving feel over raw horsepower. R32 のスカイライン GTR 年式は平成6年式です外装は全部フルカーボンですね至るところ全部ですね外反っていう外反全部カーボンで製作しました遊び心も含めて NA で作ってみましたそうですねあの今までまあレースとかも含めてハイパワーな GTR を作ることはもう散々やってきて、まあ、500馬力だの600馬力、えー、うちの、まあ、デモカーの、えー、ドラッグ R に関しては、えー、1150馬力、まあ、トルクも115キロを出して、まあ、速く走ることとか、えー、そういうことはもう散々やってきたんですけどやっぱり NA の音気持ちよさとドライビングをこう楽しめる車を作りたくなって今回はちょっと変わった仕様。ブロックは輸出用の RB30 のブロックをベースにヘッドは RB26 のヘッドを使ってでヘッドもナプレックさんのドラッグ燃焼室キットにしてポートも自社で削ってあとピックバルブ入れてカムはターボ用しかないんで RB26 用の RSE 車の292度のリフトが 11.5 を入れてバルブリフターとバルブスプリングも交換してますで気持ちよくピックアップもよくなるような仕様でエンジンは組み上げましたこの1991 Acura NSX は、私たちのブライアン・シミズのアナハイム・カリフォルニア。ブライアンのクリエイティブリモディファイド NSX は、私たちのクリエイティブリモディファイド 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 NSX は、私たちのクリエイティブリ
Ben Vargas of Pleasant Hill, California brings us his 1993 Nissan 240SX. Beginning life as a base model automatic S13, Ben's car has received numerous suspension and engine upgrades, as well as a 5-speed swap, while retaining a mostly stock look. Sarah Bante's period-style 1990 Mazda RX-7 comes to us from Chino, California, having made more than five previous appearances at JCCS. Benefiting from a Bridgeport 13B turbo swap, Sarah reports her FC is good for 300 horsepower. From Atlantic Beach, Florida, here's Pablo Zapata's 1995 Nissan 240SX. This creatively modified S14 brings together tuning components from a variety of sources for a truly personalized feel. Lastly, from Miami, Florida, we present Kyle Murphy's Laguna Seca Blue 1998 Nissan 240SX. This S14 boasts a heavily built KA24DE turbo power plant, a Fortune Auto coilover suspension, and numerous other components to create a total performance package. What's up JCCS? My name is Kyle Murphy and I'm the original owner of this 98 Nissan 240SX featured in October 2019 print issue of Super Street. I painted the car Laguna Seca Blue in 2002. I run Sylvia Aero all around with a Gretti front lip, Bomex grille, Craft Square side mirrors, charge speed front fenders with rolled and pulled rears. I run Fortune Auto 500 Gen 6 coilovers and a bunch of other suspension parts. I bought these 18x9 and 18x10 three-piece work equip 01 five-spoke wheels brand new in 2006. For brakes, I run Z32 calipers front and rear with 350Z rotors up front. The car has a built KA24 DET on E85 capable of 600 rear wheel horsepower paired to a Z32 transmission, one piece drive shaft, and J30 differential. Everything is controlled via AM Infinity standalone. The interior is full of Nismo parts, including 330 steering wheel, full pedal cover set, seats, harnesses, and titanium shift knob. I also run a Works Belt quick release, Mazworks harness bar, and Street Faction extinguisher mount for safety. Thank you for letting me share my car with you all. And now it's time for Kyusha Trivia, brought to you by Japanese Nostalgic Car. Japanese Nostalgic Car is the premier English language site for classic Japanese cars. And each day during World Matsuri Week, they'll be bringing you a trivia question to test your Kyusha knowledge. If you answer correctly, you'll be entered into a daily drawing for a sticker set from JNC and JCCS. To submit your answer, go to JapaneseNostalgicCar.com and click the JCCS 2020 link. And now, here's today's Kyusha Trivia Question. Today's trivia question is sponsored by Mother's Polish. Why was the Mazda RX-7 named Savannah in Japan? Go to JapaneseNostalgicCar.com to submit your answer. Good luck! That's it for day six of World Matsuri Week, but we're not finished with the cars of the 1990s just yet. Join us tomorrow for more great Neo Classics from the 1990s. Until then, I'm Patrick Strong for Japanese Classic Car Show. Thanks for joining us.